on this aspects, but they are applicable to all higher education institutes. So the, mo uh, the most important concept which will be implemented from 2023 is multiple entry, multiple exit. How it will happen? Now you can imagine the scenario that we are running a four years degree program, right? Let us assume that initially number of students getting multiple exit will be very less, right? But gradually it will go on increasing, right? And we need to devise our mechanisms in such a way that we have to also able to keep these students in our institute because the revenue generation is the most important aspect that we need to take care very seriously. That's why the provisions are also made that students once entered in your education institute will remain in your institute at least for one year. That's why entry will be in odd semester and exit will be in even semester. So there will be no entry exit in between the semester. One year at least you will get the fees from that particular student, right? Because everything comes to the fees. Okay, next. I hope you know this credit structure. Anybody, any speaker has been uh, discussed earlier that now uniform credit structure we need to follow 20 credits per semester, right? And a degree program is of 160 credit, straight way uniform to all the disciplines, right? So that has been framed over there. This is also known to you, right? 4.5 UG certificate, minimum 40 credits he has to earn. Apart from that 40 credits, 10 extra credits. See, this multiple entry, multiple exits, student may take the benefit of it, right? Undue benefit of it, I can say. Multiple times he will exit, multiple times he will try to enter it, right? But every time, he need to spend, if he want to exit, he need to spend two months extra to earn this 10 credits. So it will be 40 plus 10, 50 credits. So it's not that much easy to exit, right? Those who cannot able to do, this provision is only for this particular students, right? Okay. So this exit is at first year, second year, third year. Look at exit in first year and offering him a certificate of that particular branch is also a tough task. For engineering, first year is common to all branches. Am I right? How you can give a UG certificate for civil engineering and he is studying only one subject in first year for civil engineering. Right? So there is another challenge. You need to restructure your curriculum for the first year and here afterwards there will be no concept of common curriculum for first year. I will also show you in the guidelines there is no common program for first year engineering. It will be branch specific. Right? And when we need to implement? July. Right? Our curriculum is not been yet ready and we have not thought of it. Right? So, we need to immediately focus on designing the curriculum aspects. What 10 credit course student will do? Out of that, mandatory 6 credits for internship. Because he must earn a job. That is the aim. Right? Rest of the 4 credits, you can give any uh, major course related to that particular stream. So he has to complete a 10 credits out of that, 6 credits are job specific internship. This is very another important aspect. Now we define fees yearly. In any P, we need to define the fees course fees. Right? And this is the most challenging phenomenon which is going to make large changes in our life in the life of the teacher, right? Because if the fee is course-wise, I don't know what will happen. You can understand what I want to speak, right? <laughs> so, you should be in a position to define a course for that student will take interest and will join. Now it is not like that this is the curriculum and teach that curriculum in the class. Right? After some years, the stage will come like that. This is my course. I will announce that course. 
my co-colleague will also announce that course and there will be a competition that the students will enroll to whom course and if they are enrolling to my course I learn more right this is going to happen right it is not an immediate implementation but over the time this philosophy is going to be there in higher education that's why this is a very remarkable change we observed in the NEP that the fees will be charged course wise. Next, this is also another very challenging aspect re entry after exit. We have two options in the same institute or in now, student takes admission in your institute and you are sure that four years he will be in your institute, you will get four years fees. That concept is now going to over. After one year, he may get exit, may go to another institute, right? Complete there another year, one movie, right? But there are certain restrictions on that also. We will discuss that point also. It is not a free bird. There are restrictions, right? The due care is taken for institutes also, right? So I'll come down to that particular point, but this is very important. He may opt any different higher education and re-entry will be defined by academic bank of credits now nothing in the hands of university you earn a credit deposit into the bank the bank will take care whether to redeem how many times to be redeemed right and to give the opportunity over there this is just a sample uh, i have straightway taken from the uh, document released by the government of maharashtra that what set of team credit bridge courses that we are talking about ultimate aim is that the student should get job right so this is for become but you can draft it for engineering can you believe that after first year of engineering student get a job he is not getting after four years so how he will get after first year so it's very important that your bridge course should be a job giving course right okay you can take an example here after become right he could start his own business right so after engineering you, you can think which course he will offer so that he will start his own career it's so very difficult to design these courses right because everything our again mindset is theoretical right we don't know if within two minutes two months what we are going to give that particular student so that he becomes employable Right? So you need to design such bridge courses which will make these students employed. Otherwise, NEP will remain only on in the document. Right? If student is not getting any job after first year of engineering, what is the use of this multiple exit? Right? And the mentality will continue that okay, provision is there, nobody has applied, what we can do? Right? But then you have to give the compliance every year to the AICT or UGC that how many have taken this, why they have not taken this, like that. Okay. So, these are the bridge courses. Same thing happened for postgraduate. Postgraduate will be now two years degree. Once again exit after one year. If he is exiting after one year, student will get postgraduate diploma. This is for non-engineering. For engineering, he will get MVOC degree. Master in vocational after first year exit, right? And uh, for non engineering, he will get postgraduate diploma. Similarly, for master's degree, entry points are two now, three rather. What three entry points? If he is doing general three years bachelor's degree for non engineering, he may go for master's degree. Four years bachelor degree on <coughs> research. He may also go for masters. Everywhere the level is mentioned, level is same. 6.5, 6.5. And for engineering, AICT institutes, it will be after we take degree, he may he can go as usual as per our conventional I have covered about MVOC degree. We are talking about integrated bachelors and masters. Many universities have already started this particular uh, program, but any NEP, there is a compulsion that we should start this masters, integrated bachelors and masters uh, program with 200 credits. 
Now, how this lateral entry and re-entry will be carried out at the higher rates? We need to define few things. One thing, my students are going out and I need to take students from other institutes. As an institute, I'm interested in the second part more because that will give me ready. Right? Because the facility has been provided that I can admit the students of other institutes. So I must know how we can do this particular process. So we need to define the eligibility conditions for taking the admission. See, my student is going out at first year, second year, third year. So now my admission process will be also at first year, second year, third year, final year. Right? So four years I need to carry out my admission process. So I need to define the rules for the admission process for all these four years. What is the eligibility to take admission in second year, third year, final year? Right? And this eligibility will be based upon what credits he has earned. Now this is not only the sufficient criteria. Criteria is what? You have limited seats. If you are a good institute, you have limited seats and many students will apply. You have to design your rules that to whom I will give the admission. Right? So, you need to carry out certain taste for designing this particular admission process. Their qualification is one part. Right? You can conduct your online test, your interviews and then do their admissions to this particular thing. Okay? So, Second thing, you need to earmark specific intake for lateral entry. It does not mean that you can take so many applications, so many admissions, right? As far as AICT is concerned, they have given 20% lateral entry at the higher levels, right? Yet we do not know out of that 20%, 10% we are already utilizing it for direct second year. Is it include that 10% or exclude? That is yet not known to us. But they say 20% lateral entry is allowed for engineering institutes. For non-engineering institutes, the university may decide, they may give the guidelines that these many number of seats are allowed every year. So that you have less pressure of handling this number of seats. But still 20% is quite big amount and for that 20% you have to design so many mechanisms. For example, if the student is coming from non autonomous institute to your institute if you are autonomous the curriculum will not get match you need to design a bridge course right student has to do that bridge course first <coughs> then the entry is possible so our job is now increase a lot earlier we have to you define design only curriculum now we need to design the exit course we need to design the bridge course right and for every stream every branch right so and from first year to final year because first year exit course will not be same as second year exit course right so our task has been now increased a lot lot many curriculum design we need to carry it out in next three to three to four months in our institutes right so another important aspect this multiple entry or lateral entry re-entry how many times student will do Right? At present there is no restriction. Is there restriction? No. There is no restriction. But there is a stipulated period given. Within that stipulated period, the student has to complete their degree. And that stipulated period is 7 years for non-engineering institutes defined by UGC and yet AICT has not defined it. But we know that for engineering degree it is 10 years or uh, 10 years student can do. Maybe AICT will continue the same pattern. Right? So, within that stipulated period, he may do a multiple entry, multiple exit. Remember, when student takes a multiple uh, uh, say exit, right? he cannot enter in the same year. He has to enter in the same year. So, it's a wastage of one year. So, it's not that much easy to go out and then come back. Right? Every time two months bridge course, so student will lose his entry in odd semester. Right? So, there is an ample of provision, 4 years degree you can complete in 10 years, right, by doing all this particular NC exit. Yeah. 
I talked about this particular thing that entry in the odd semester, prerequisite based upon written test, interview, bridge courses, right? Everything. Okay. Now, lateral entry has two specific objects. One object that, I'll take the example of engineering. I have taken admission in civil engineering. I completed two years. I got diploma in civil engineering. Right? Now I want re-entry. Right? There are two options. You can re-enter in civil program or you can re-enter in any other engineering branch program for third year. This is another big challenge. Suppose I have taken admission for civil and after two years I want to go for a computer. I don't know anything from computer. You have to design the bridge courses for that student. That student should know something about computer and then you can give it uh, in the admission to the third year of computer. Okay? See, a lot of efforts are required. This is not easy. Right? And whenever there are efforts, simple solution for our community is what? There is no application. <laughs> yes, sir, please. Suppose student completed diploma, it means he, com uh, he or she completed 80 credits. Right. Total degree of 160 credit. Right. Now he entered into the third year. Right. Uh, uh, suppose for uh, computer. Computer. Right. But that is the minor specialization. That is not core specialization. Yes. Yes. And for minor. I, I'll come down to that particular point. But my, but, uh, but, uh, but yes, yes. But for minor specialization, the credit is fixed. Maybe. 20 or 30. 20 but minutes. basically, he, he remains as a major civil. Right, right. I'll come down to that slide also. Definitely. <coughs> because there are. Why I'm telling all these particular points? Because I need to go to the credit framework where these restrictions are being given. But he has that provision. If you want to admit him for the minor in computer, you, you need to design the bridge courses. Yes. 